and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have a newcomer into the temple. Coming to us from Hoxen Studios, creators of the upcoming Astro Inferno, the one and only Ante Roo. How you doing today, man? Or tonight, in your case? Uh, yeah, um, I'm fine. Thank you. Mm -hmm. It's uh, great to be here. I would I would say you're probably in nicer weather, but I can't. But I kind of doubt it. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, pretty cold and like snow everywhere. No. Oh. My natural climate. Yeah, but it was kind of sunny today, actually. So, it's we got that. Well, it's um, it's sunny, but it's also seventeen below Celsius. Yeah, something like that. Mm -hmm. So, I'd like to st I'd like to start off at the humble beginnings, as I usually do mm -hmm. around here. Yeah. Um, Walk me through your first introduction to role-playing games and what made it stick. Uh, oh, it was uh, really, really early. I, I started like in first grade, uh, and uh, you know, I visited the, this uh, toy store, uh, and I saw this box for the Swedish uh, uh, game Drakar and Demoner, uh, Dragons and Demons, uh, and. Uh, I, I didn't know what it was, uh, but I wanted it. <laughs> so I said, I want that for my birthday. And I got it, and there were books in this box, uh, and I read them. <laughs> and, like, we, I never played uh, with them uh, the first year or something. I, I took them to school, showed my friends, and, like, we read, and we, like, we don't know what, what the hell this is. <laughs> and then we tried it, and we were hooked for life. Uh, mm -hmm. That's that's sort of the the start, actually. Uh, and uh, later on, uh, we grew up, and started to play English uh, role-playing games like uh, Call of Cthulhu, and uh, and it's it's like a golden age uh, for me. Uh, mm -hmm. Like it's the start of the uh, like 1991 or 1992 or something. That's like my what I remember as my, my uh, uh, RPG prime or something, uh, and we've been playing since then, sort of, nonstop. But it it sounds to me like you were not a one system lifer like like some. You jumped around between. No, no, no. I I don't think anyone in Sweden did that because we had. S we have so many like franchises in Sweden that uh, we had the first. It was uh, Drakar and Demoner, the mm -hmm. fantasy setting that was sort of Dungeons and Dragons, but really more like GURPS or, or basic role playing. Uh, and then uh, Mutant uh, came out sh sh shortly after that. Uh, so many who played Drakar and Demoner <laughs> moved over to Mutant to play like the. Uh, Badgers with uh, AK-47s and stuff uh, because it was fun, mm -hmm. uh, and then cult came. Uh, that's really what got me uh, stuck forever mm -hmm. um, because it was so it was so heretic. Uh, I actually I, I was stopped, uh, and I must have been like 15 or 16 years old when this happened. I was going. Uh, I'm, I'm living in this really small town up in northern Sweden mm -hmm. and uh, I was uh, walking it's it was winter and I was uh, walking and I had uh, cult the box uh, under my arm and a person across the street is like you there is that cult and I was like yeah do you know that this is pure evil and he was like uh, uh uh, a religious, uh, like free religious uh, guy. Oh, one uh, of those. Yeah, and he was he was a lot older. I guess he was like thirty years old or something. And he like preached to me for 
like 30 minutes I, and I couldn't get away. I was, I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, and he and he talked about you know what's you're going to hell and you're gonna you know when you burn yourself on a lighter that's what it's gonna feel like forever. I was like, what the fuck is wrong with this guy? Uh, so th- that's the that's my introduction to like heretic role playing. I guess you want to know what I find <laughs> funny about about some um, cult having that reputation. Yeah. Um. No. <laughs> Well, uh, cult is has a lot has a lot of its motifs firmly rooted in Gnosticism. Yeah. So the, so it and the and a lot of a lot of the ideals with it within it, which is why some people say yeah. it's Call of Cthulhu, except you can win. <laughs> Yeah, well, there's something uh, in there. But would it be fair of me to say that Cold was was one of the big inspirations for Astro Inferno? Uh, yeah, you you should say that because uh, it actually it actually started with uh, I was uh, playing a campaign uh, with my players, and it was this. Uh, 18th uh, century campaign in, in Italy, in Venice, uh, mm-hmm. with plague, and, and uh, they were working on a university and stuff. And it was a really fun campaign, uh, but the campaign material like grew and grew and grew, and I like wrote this large pantheon uh, on top of the existing cult one. Uh, and when I was finished with that campaign, I was like, what am I going to do with all this lore? I can't just throw this away. So uh, I created Astro Inferno. So mm-hmm. it's it's uh, sort of uh, originated from uh, cult, actually. Uh, yeah. Which is something I can is something I can certainly get behind because there's been plenty of stories of games that started out as a hack of another that just evolved yeah. into their own thing. Oh, yeah. I'd say one of the big one of the big examples of that would be um, Rollmaster. Yeah. Which has its roots as be, as being in an, an extensive hack of AD and D, and then it just kind of evolved into its own thing. Yeah, it took you it took off on itself. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, I'm I'm. Uh, I'm sort of uh, my first intentions was actually to like. Uh, I saw, you know, Merk Borg. Mm-hmm. Uh, I saw that, and I love that book. It's uh, like an art book, uh, and uh, I was like, "Well, I should create like an art role-playing for game." But it it like grew beyond that during the the uh, during the project. Uh, well, it's it's so. funny you met, it's funny you compare Merk Borg to an art book because. I don't recall the organization's name, but I recall that it was nominated for a legit graphic design award in Sweden. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was, yeah. But it's a it's a really nice book. Yeah. Now, I'd I can I was trying to I I wanted to avoid the uh, Mork Borg comparison because I thought that would be a little obvious, but since that um, cat's out of the bag. I will. I will admit that I was certainly getting that same doom metal vibe. Although, although I suppose, I suppose the best way to put it is that if Morkborg is doom metal, Astro Inferno appears to be black metal. I, I would say actually it's more like s- satanic synth metal. I guess, uh, like uh, Ramstein or something. Uh, <laughs> that's how I would, but it's it's a lot of death metal references. That's yeah. for sure. Oh. Uh, I'm really I'm really myself into like uh, stoner and doom metal, but but uh, I enjoy death metal too. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and it's it's uh, or black metal, uh, and it's it, it has the uh, the design and aesthetics that uh, suits very well to Astro Inferno. So yeah, um, in that. Re- I'm tempted to br- I'm tempted to bring up um, the weirdness of of um, Psy, given that they've 
done a f done a few hell themed albums themselves. Uh, what what uh, Psy? Psy is a vi is a black is a black metal act that started in okay, Tokyo okay. back in 1990. They're actually the first non European um, black metal act to get to get signed. Yeah. Oh, uh, and they uh, Psy is weird. They're the only band I can think of that managed to find a way to make a speak and spell into an instrument. Oh. And yeah, how do you spell it? I'm trying to find it here. S I G H. Okay. And and yeah, they've while while they while they are bla while they are black slash experimental metal. Um, I think I think just going with the genre name is doing them a bit of a disservice. Ah, uh. uh, but <clears throat> that's that's ca it is it it is heartening to see that kind of musical relationship with with um ga with games designs. Yeah. Oh. Uh, because everybody's got their muses. <laughs> yeah, it's it's really hard to like. Yeah, I, I was like, uh, should I put any music to this? What I I, I really wanted to, but music is so personal, uh, and uh, games are not. <laughs> I guess uh, that's a way to put it. Mm -hmm. But uh, I've been pretty clear that uh, it's like the synthwave. Uh, and satanic synthwave and yeah. uh, like behemoth uh, death metal uh, vibe. So mm -hmm. I'm just continuing on that. Yeah. Oh, in that in that same vein, you talk about it being a beyond grimdark setting. Yeah. Now, when it comes to gr when it comes to grimdark, obviously people have their own associations with that term. But yeah. what? Do but when I hear that, I keep thinking of post grim dark. Is that is that kind of what you're going with? Uh, yeah, I've, exactly. I, I, something that's like worse than the grim dark. So uh, midnight and, with uh, extra steps. Uh, yeah, and like extra everything. Mm -hmm. It's it's so it's misery quadrupled. Mm -hmm. Uh, this world that I've created, uh, I don't know if you have seen, it's a Russian movie called uh, It's Hard to Be God. Uh, if you haven't, go see it. It's it's phenomenal, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, in this movie, there's like one smart person. <laughs> and he's, he's sent to this planet from Earth. Uh, and since he's, he's like m mediocre, intelligent, uh, and uh, since he's like mediocre, intelligent, you know, uh, the one-eyed is leading the blind, uh, and everyone else is like the most moronic, almost like animals, intelligence. Uh, so they walk around in the mud. They eat like fish that are <laughs> like rotting fish, or and they they smear poop in their faces, and uh, it's like so uh, the f complete despair uh, yeah. and that's that's pretty much uh, astro inferno uh, the the like uh, uh, Varda, uh, the 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 normal person's uh, world in astro inferno yeah now i i suppose i suppose another um another point of comparison that i could make would be the would would be the hell art by Wayne Barlow. Something else I have missed. Uh, Wayne Barlow. If you type if you type in Wayne Bar, uh, let me get let me type in the right spelling for you. Just... American American fiction writer is it him? Heart of Hell. Yeah, that's one. Mm -hmm. Oh, I've never. Yeah, I've... sure. Hmm? I've never known Wayne Barlow as a fiction writer, but more of it, more of a concept artist for a lot of different films and other projects. Yeah. 
obviously hell was never made into a film because nobody because i don't think any studio would t would touch it with regarding how much this would cost yeah oh uh, yeah he, he's done some pretty cool stuff and i i can tell you that uh, this is really up astro inferno's vein it's, it's like uh, epic dark hellish uh, and uh, heretic stuff <laughs> so yeah uh, yeah it's uh, you're on the money mm -hmm. now getting into getting into the nitty-gritty of things um as an aside i did i did get a bit of a chuckle bring bringing up soul bringing up these souls games these days especially yeah. nowadays um yeah but there's but i um i'm a bit curious when it comes to the concept of forms and destinies which you Likened to races and classes, but I get the sense that th that um there's a bit yeah. more to it. Yeah, it's uh, if if we start with with the forms, uh, they're all the forms are humans, um, or at least human bodies in some cases, because uh, the Liliths are actually a demon soul inhabiting a human uh, body. Mm -hmm. uh, but the other the other forms are human souls that uh, well uh, sort of got uh, <laughs> got lost in hell I guess mm -hmm. uh, for a better word uh, and uh, they're they're very like uh, different sort of you got the, like the Genesis machine that is you know these large robotic uh, beings that uh, somewhere in there there's, there's maybe a brain or there's like a program like a copy of uh, a human mind or something that's mm -hmm. still considered a soul so in the eyes of hell it's a human uh, and uh, you have uh, like uh, nano suits who are uh, uh, like human bodies but uh, they have uh, been reinforced by nano machines uh, mm -hmm. So they're like half robot, half human, <clears throat> sort of think dig digitally and uh, uh, sort of confounded in what they are, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, and you got the normal humans, of course, uh, and that's sort of a selling point, actually, to the game, the undying, I call them. Uh, there are so very few of them... Uh, it's like in the hundreds uh, or something. Uh, and they're the last survivors from Earth. Uh, and in their, in their world, um, this has only been going on for like 10 years. They've been sitting on like a space station, seeing the world go to hell, uh, lived in like uh, uh, the Great Fog, they call mm -hmm. it. Like... Uh, large cloud of smoke or something and uh, like living on reserves on their satellite or space station and uh, like see the emergency systems light up one by one and uh, finally they're like what the hell I'm, I'm stepping out I, I I'm, I'm dead anyway so they're like put on their suits and step out of their capsules or and float out into space and land on <laughs> like a shore mm -hmm. uh, and see a little settlement where some people are and they're like what the fuck <laughs> where am i uh, and uh, in every other soul uh, every other soul uh, uh, regards this world to have been like eons it has been like billions and billions of years uh, mm -hmm. and to the undying it's like but it was seven years ago <laughs> Uh, yeah. So, um, the world has aged really fast, I guess. Yeah. <clears throat> and one of what's, what I'm curious about when it comes to forms is how much of a factor they play into character creation. Because we've, we, I think we've all, I think we've both seen games where your, your, um, cho your choice of race or, or its equivalent Matters a little bit in the early game, but by late game, it doesn't matter all that much in terms of yeah. what it get in terms of what it brings to your sandbox. Yeah, 
Uh, and it's actually the same here. Uh, you you uh, start with little different, uh, like you have you have uh, sort of different uh, capabilities, I guess. Uh, and there are some abilities that are tied to your form that you can't like have from any other form. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, mostly you develop uh, independently and uh, can like. Uh, any form can uh, like develop into you know this world is is really weird when it comes to evolving characters because mm -hmm. uh, you can corrupt uh, you can grow tentacles you can uh, like uh, grow wings uh, it's or uh, and you can and that's just the corruptions and then you can like evolve into a god uh, drinking uh, the bloods of the gods and and evolve that way also so mm -hmm. Uh, and there's the hun black honey of the Haxan uh, that uh, also uh, mutates bodies. So, uh, like evolution, a, a player who starts out as a full-blown robot, like a Genesis machine, like mm -hmm. an industrial robot or something, could have like <laughs> tentacles and and uh, horns and and uh, human skin and stuff uh, by the time he has played a couple of campaigns. Mm -hmm. Now, that brings me into cla into the destinies or classes. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Uh, and uh, those are like uh, what your soul is like doing. So it's sort of an occupation. Mm -hmm. There aren't any occupations in this world because uh, there there is no like uh, trading there is no economics going on uh, so there are sort of weird occupations uh, adventuring occupations uh, that's uh, available and um, the occupation mechanic wise uh, the destinies they bring out like a, a special ability i guess uh, and it can be like the mystic, of course, can can uh, uh, do rituals uh, and has an easier time casting rituals. Mm -hmm. But but uh, there is uh, anyone can can lure anyone can become a mystic and every, anyone can become a, a jaeger and uh, those destinies because uh, every character has dark marks. It's called mm -hmm. uh, and that's like a dark blessing from your master and uh, you can level this up by leveling up the connection to your master and if you're you're like a magician uh, and you want to like i i need more uh, let's say life uh, that's like hp in this game uh, it, wounds is really interesting by the way but uh, for the sake of things uh, I have really low life, then you can get like a dark mark that's uh, that will gi grant you like better life points up the scale and then start to level that dark mark. Uh, and a warrior could uh, choose the dark mark witch and start to leveling in a witch. Uh, so uh, classes are also very free and uh, can like become each other, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what I'm one one thing that I'm curious about when it comes to the, when it comes to when it comes to the de when it comes to the um, destinies is is it, is it a case of a starting package as well as the as well as possibilities of advancement or is advancement in Astro Inferno a bit more freeform. Uh, it's uh, the destinies aren't. Uh, I, I think the destinies aren't giving you any uh, like spe special funneling to in advancement, but the forms are mm -hmm. uh, because uh, one of your dark marks is based upon uh, your uh, your form uh, and. Uh, that's just to keep like keep the 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 robotic genesis machine is is supposed to be the large <laughs> thing mm -hmm. uh, so he has like the dark mark uh, that makes him large mm -hmm. uh, but the others doesn't uh, so 
it's just to keep the uniqueness of each form uh, that I've implemented that. Mm -hmm. Now, when it comes to the when it comes to the core mecha the core mechanic, yeah. As I understand it, it's purely a d tw a d twenty roll. Yeah. But I believe you. Uh, but you had it set up as a store as a story point system. So. Yeah. What I'm what I'm curious about is is this a is this a case of a ro a rolling high d20 or is there no um is there no target number you're just rolling for story points? Uh, no, it's uh, a target number. Uh, you try to roll below your quality or skill, uh, and uh, every step of five below your skill gives you a story point. Right. Uh, so. If you roll below your skill, but not f a difference of five, then you have succeeded with your action and uh, can be happy about that. Uh, and if you roll uh, five below your target number, uh, then you get a story point. Mm -hmm. And then you can say, let's say you, you uh, succeeded with a sneak check and you get a story point. Then you can say, OK, I, I managed to sneak up to the guard. And with my story point, I kill him. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can perform a, a complete other action, uh, like listening or <laughs> killing people or, or uh, anything, actually. So um, it's, uh, it, it, it gets very epic very fast. Uh, and uh, like if you, if you roll a perfect uh, natural one in this system, uh, then you double all, all your uh, story points. So if you have a value of 15 and roll a 1, then you would get 3 story points times 2. Then you suddenly have 6 actions. Uh, and you can do a lot with that. Uh, so uh, the, the system is really built to be like myth-creating uh, uh, stuff. Uh, you, you can't like... Uh, use it uh, as a as a normal i guess uh, uh, osr uh, game like uh, the the elf is getting six sessions and like runs off into the distance mm -hmm. you have to keep it like narrative so uh, maybe he he does his six actions while the others are like going with him and uh, you know uh, so it's it's it, de it demands a little more from the gm mm -hmm. uh, but it also puts a bit of pressure on the players because they got to have the imagination what they're doing with these actions or aspects you can mm -hmm. create aspects with the story points also yeah and I will admit I w I'm a little bit reminded of the victory point system that's utilized in Fading Suns. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Although in that case, it's, you're try in that case you're trying to aim you're trying to aim high but under the um, target number. Yeah. Whereas this one you're trying to aim for as as low as possible. Yeah. And the uh, the reason we keep it as low as possible is. Partly a homage to Swedish role-playing systems, uh, because they always kept the inverted die where the lower the better, uh, and the perfect being the one. Uh, and uh, partly because in this game you can advance so much farther than 20. Uh, you can have like 50 in a skill if, if you're really lucky. and uh, So... Um, it's uh, partly that choice. Mm -hmm. And in that re in that regard, a lot of games have some sort of extra effort system, as I, as I've called it. Yep. Oh, uh, sometimes sometimes this push can... yourself. Yeah. Um, yeah. World and that's really important, <laughs> of course. Uh, in uh, modern role-playing games uh, and we got one like that also uh, it's called straining sanity because sanity is really important uh, every soul has an inner demon uh, that is based upon the deadly sins you no know, lust and greed and uh, and 
So when you want to push yourself, you can uh, lower your roll by five uh, by spending one D6 sanity points. You gotta have a D6 ready also, and like, okay, I'm 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 like trying really hard. I'm pushing myself, mm -hmm. uh, and then you go a little insane every time you, you do that. Uh, you're letting uh, letting your inner demon come forward a little more, uh, and uh, if you uh, roll badly or have a low sanity th threshold uh, that is based on upon your uh, stats, of course, uh, then you will gain an itch, an inner demon itch. Mm -hmm. So if you are a, like uh, have a greed demon and get an inner itch, then you have to do something to satisfy your greed demon. So it could be, it could be like stealing something or lying to someone about some valuable stuff or uh, sneaking away from the others uh, to loot something alone. And, uh, and if you don't do that uh, action uh, before you gain another itch, then you get a craving. And then you really have to like uh, do something. The first, uh, the itch is like a role playing. Uh, you can like slap someone in the ass or or something. Like uh, it's it's more of a flavor thing. Mm. Uh, but when you gain the craving, then you like pride uh, demon is starting to write his memoirs and his he has this grand plan suddenly and mm -hmm. uh, so uh, it's it's. Uh, like emerging role-playing um, uh, in settlement uh, with the, the sanity system and mm -hmm. the push mechanics. Yeah, and I def I definitely appreciate that sort that sort of reward with risk kind of approach. Yeah. Uh, now, with that with that kind, with that kind of thing in mind. When it comes to, when it, what would you say would be the baseline for difficulty? Much in the same way that, in a lot of in a lot of D, roll high D twenty base games, the baseline for the target number is fit that you'd have to roll under is fifteen. So what would be the um what would be the baseline in that regard? Like ten? Yeah, I I think uh, between ten and fifteen. That's sort of the sweet spot for s skills uh, in the beginning, uh, but. As you like level up and become more epic, uh, uh, it's like 20, 25, uh, because you need b to to make this uh, to fight the, the epic enemies and uh, like being the gods uh, that you can be or or demons. Uh, then you have to spend a couple of story points uh, here and there, and uh, like if you. Uh, want to uh, smash the demon into the wall uh, then you want three story points to create the truth that the demon is like crashing through the wall and the wall is now gone mm -hmm. uh, and then you want three story points to change the truth that this wall is actually gone now and uh, this uh, enemy has been pushed through it mm -hmm. as an example yeah. So uh, the baseline is really low from the start, and uh, then it's cranking up. Mm -hmm. Now, one thing that you had mentioned earlier that I did I did want to delve in I did want to delve into is the path of blood. Yeah, uh, that's which is really definitely really where, a favorite. <laughs> it's definitely where the um, cult DNA come uh, really shines through. Yeah, uh, the the path of blood is is really interesting, and I I, I sort of love this uh, system. Uh, uh, it's uh, there's a certain genesis uh, origin that that we uh, call the ancients, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, they're uh, they're the divine beings of old, the mythical divine beings. Uh, creatures and uh, gods that m mankind has uh, worshipped at any time in history. Uh, and uh, they come from myth uh, and they are golden-blooded. Mm. Uh, so the, they have 
like the heavenly ichor in their veins. Uh, and uh, of course, the satanic beings love to like drink heavenly ichor. It's it's <laughs> it's uh, uh, self explanatory, I guess. Uh, and uh, this gives them the sort of s- small powers from these beings. They grow. They ascend the path of blood uh, and human well, the, the souls uh, the players can also do this of course mm-hmm. uh, and uh, if you like kill a god uh, which is not that uncommon in this game it's like killing a dragon i guess in something uh, then you can harvest its uh, uh, remains mm. uh, and get different stuff like uh, it's doses of blood of course that you can refine through witchcraft and and uh, uh, make into potent uh, uh, blood mm. that you can use to ascend and you can harvest like blood relics uh, and that is really the organs of these gods uh, and these can be used to gain special powers and uh, usually you smoke them <laughs> in like uh, uh, pipes and stuff but there are different ways to to do them and uh, use them mm-hmm. but uh, you gain certain powers uh, depending on which god you have uh, uh, harvested it from mm-hmm. uh, and uh, sometimes you can like uh, take the heart of a god and uh, of course gods are invincible they they will be reborn Mm -hmm. they will like resurrect uh, and then you can like I got your heart Uh, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you you gotta do something for me or you won't get it you can like blackmail a god uh, with his own heart uh, for example Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, there's or all sorts of things that can happen with this uh, blood also. Uh, you can carry knowledge within your blood. Uh, so if a soul, a soul can have, like, I have the key to the vault of Odin. Oh, you have the key? Yeah, it's in my blood. Then to get that key, you sort of have to kill him and drink his blood. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, blood can be a lot of things. Oh, yeah. Maps and keys and knowledge. Mm-hmm. Now, with that, with that, with that kind of thing in mind, I'd, I'd say, give, I'd say, given the, given the depth of this of the setting, yeah, it's one of those things that can run into that can run into the potential issue of, Oh, met of meta narrative or the issue of how, of how you integrate the player characters within the within the story. Yeah, yeah, sure. Oh, so is is that something that's been considered in terms yeah. of in terms of giving pe- giving people a means to integ- means to integrate their characters or some potential um, story seeds? Uh, yes, uh, there are actually I, I when I started this and uh, like. Uh, detected <laughs> that this is going out of <laughs> this is getting too much uh, and it's too weird for for people to understand from the get go. Uh, I said that we have to create uh, at least two campaigns and two introductory uh, adventures just to get like uh, get people to know what kind of stories that you you. Uh, can play in this game, mm-hmm. so you have to describe it really well because uh, it's so it's a, such a weird setting uh, otherwise, um, and and that's one part. And the other part is uh, that I've um, sort of built the system with this in mind. Uh, you have uh, when you start a game, you start with the embarking. It's called. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's like a way to get the group tight together. Uh, you always start with a bang, so to say. Uh, it always starts with something truly terrible happening, and and uh, this like uh, sets the ship to sea, I guess. The embarking, yeah. Uh, so it starts the journey of the players, and uh, 
makes them have a common goal uh, and uh, like uh, grounds them in the story uh, and then you, to gain experience you have the journey system that is uh, everything you do and the truth you create in your stories uh, you note down in your journey mm-hmm. uh, and then these uh, events and uh, songs uh, are tiered uh, they're giving a tier and this generates experience points uh, so uh, it can be like the uh, the fantastic burglary mm-hmm. of the small gift shop down at the <laughs> uh, the square uh, or or like the horrible uh, murder of the queen Mm -hmm. Uh, and these are tiered differently of course Uh, and then later you can use these stories uh, as you adventure through the void Uh, and like oh we need uh, we need a good story to uh, convince this baron to lend us his uh, relic ship or something Mm -hmm. Uh, then you can like okay let's use this story about the horrible murder of the queen uh, and then you gain a bonus and you can use it for like depending on the tier you can use it a couple of times uh, so you can go back into your story and, and use your like the journey you have created and mm-hmm. enjoy your story <laughs> for for longer time than in other games mm-hmm. um and then there's one other thing that connects them to the world, and it's their master. Uh, their master is often God or a, or a fallen angel, a demon. Um, and uh, when when a character dies, uh, they most often get to meet their master. Not every time, but uh, mo- most every time they get to meet their master. And their master slowly... The master has a plan for their like pawn i guess um their champion and uh, you never get to know what this plan is uh, because this plan is actually your actions Mm -hmm. what you're doing is uh, what what your master wants you to do uh, because he's one step ahead or she um and uh, your master will during these uh, small sessions between life and death uh, they can like give you missions uh, give you quests uh, give you rewards in the form of blessings and uh, other stuff uh, gifts uh, and this also like uh, makes the uh, characters uh, grounded in the in the world so to speak mm-hmm. and I've, since we're ta- since we're going over since we're going over masters, I believe yep. I believe the relationship with masters does provide some some ben- some benefits because there's there's a lot of talk about bl- about a ma- about masters blessings. Yeah, uh, the blessings, uh, and this is sort of a. Um, uh, I guess it's uh, they can give different things like everything from XP uh, to uh, higher skill value in a skill or or uh, higher quality value in a quality uh, and like mechanic stuff uh, and then they can give uh, uh, abilities like features it's called it's like moves that you can do uh, so a master can like grant you the uh, I don't know a wide swing, and then suddenly you can like uh, kill more enemies with one sword, uh, with one swing, and so. Mm-hmm. Uh, and also, they can give you like art artifacts, uh, like magical uh, uh, objects, I guess, uh, that you can use in different ways. Uh, so blessings can be a lot of stuff. Uh, I, I can I can certainly get that. Um, and the other the other thing is that because of, because of the 
the um, Souls comparison that was brought that was brought up earlier. A lot of time, Souls is a, the Souls life games are one are ones that are heavily um, equipment based. Yeah, <coughs> and loot is really important in this game. I I love I like. I like play Elden Ring right now, mm-hmm. uh, and I've played Destiny for like I don't know since since it came out in 2015, uh, 14, and uh, so I love those loot looter games uh, and Dark Souls and uh, uh, where your gear has stats. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I incorporated that that also because i love when when uh, i can level up my sword or or uh, machine gun and uh, so that that's a part of uh, this game everything has tears uh, yeah so when you find something it's it's not like you find a couple of you find a pair of glasses it's you find a pair of ordinary glasses okay it's an ordinary pair of glasses i want to check out what kind of ordinary glasses this is mm-hmm. then you can roll it like, oh, it's an odd pair of glasses. Okay. Uh, so um, everything has, like, abilities, even if it's, like, mundane, boring <laughs> abilities. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that actually brings me to something else I was, go- I was going to ask mm-hmm. on, the, on that. Within the loot system, it's... It, one are there go- is there going to be some sort of randomizer for the G- for the GM if he wants to do that co- that sort of random loot, and two, do you have do you have plans supp- to support um custom custom loot? Yes and yes. Uh, we have like a loot table uh, that you can use for different kinds of things uh, and. Uh, there you you get do you you get the randomized uh, not the abilities because they are sort of uh, on the side depending mm-hmm. on their origin. Uh, so uh, if you find a legendary uh, spear, let's say, uh, then to determine what abilities this legendary spear has, then you have to know what origin is it. Uh, oh, it's a Genesis spear for example Mm -hmm. uh, made by like smart materials uh, probably some neon evangelion spear or something Uh, then you go to if you want to like uh, analyze uh, this spear and then you have to go to the genesis chapter and Mm -hmm. roll the genesis uh, abilities Uh, so it's uh, it's both a a, a random table for loot uh, that Depending on the the adversary, the enemy you have uh, defeated, or the room's uh, uh, rarity, I guess. If you loot a castle, it has a higher value than if you loot like a village or something. Mm-hmm. Uh, then you have a different uh, modifier on this uh, table. So uh, after every uh, when you kill someone, it's not like I take his axe, I take his armor. Uh, it's not that kind of deal. It's like, okay, let's see what uh, uh, loot value he has. Oh, he has plus two. Okay, then we roll and see what the hell he has. Oh, I found the potion. <laughs> yeah. You know, so it's more like uh, I don't know uh, Diablo or or something like that. Uh, more computer gamey, I guess. Yeah, that was uh, that was what I was curious about of of how far how far you're going to be delving into that loot given the inspirations yeah. you mentioned. Yeah, uh, I actually w- when I started working on the like deeper parts of these systems and the loot and stuff, uh, I was a bit worried because uh, I I hate myself when you have to like stop and okay now I've got to roll what this pair has uh, <laughs> it's that the stats of this these glasses or something that mm-hmm. like it bogs down the game and makes it boring so uh, I sort of built this system that uh, makes that um, it's equal for all players firstly mm-hmm. uh, and then you say you find uh, you 
roll uh, your loot die and you find, oh, it's a legendary weapon, let's say. Mm -hmm. uh, then you, you could, uh, okay, I want to know what weapon it is. Then you have to like roll what weapon it is. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you're not interested in a legendary weapon, uh, then you can like, okay, I have a legendary weapon. I don't need to know what it is. Uh, I want to use it as XP for my weapon. Mm -hmm. I want to like convert it, uh, go to the smithy, and I have this legendary weapon. And you never know what it is, but but uh, he can like use it to uh, upgrade your current weapon. Uh, and everything. Th this is all narrative. Uh, so. Um, but but it's a way to um, stop players from needing to know every detail. So it yeah. uh, it quickens up the game a lot, um, and this, it's the same with like I have a legendary potion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, at downtime or later in the adventure, I could like I have oh I want to know what this legendary potion is. Okay, yeah. you don't have to do it in the middle of combat or or. Uh, such a thing so so um that's that's a neat trick we did yeah and within that there's also the there's also the matter of faction play yeah and i'm curious how i'm curious um how well how well that how well that could be integrate how well that can be integrated within the campaign i.e i.e. people doing well with one faction and end up, end up pissing off another faction? Uh, yeah, sort of, uh, because the faction are so corrupt and uh, like um, splintered, I guess. Uh, so it's it's uh, it, it's um, you know, this world has gone to hell and back, uh, mm -hmm. sort of. And uh, uh, no, everything is like chaos <laughs> so so it's it's often the case of you're working for a baron or a prince or or something within the satanic court or satanic church or satanic legion uh, but he could this uh, like employer you have uh, could as easily hire you to like steal something from the god odin or or from another prince uh, because they fight among themselves as much uh, so uh, there actually th there are two factions uh, that are sort of more principal in their uh, actions and that's the haxan uh, that's uh, uh, a covenant of five witches uh, that are like I don't know, the, like special troops, <laughs> I guess, uh, of uh, the satanic court. And they are sort of more organized and uh, they have the factories where they uh, make uh, ancient weapons and, and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, they make this black honey that they uh, give to all their followers to make them more powerful. And, uh, and then there's the Elysians, which are like the Valkyries and uh, the Deathstalkers and all these uh, like special kinds of, of uh, um, champions of the gods uh, that are sort of more motivated and organized uh, compared to the players, I guess. Mm -hmm. The players could, of course, align with Haxan or with the Elysians, uh, but uh, they're, they're free to do what they what they what they like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, <laughs> with all the, with all that in with all that in mind, and there's a bu there's a bunch of other things that we that we could go over, yeah. but I don't want to I don't want to make this into a full guided tour yeah. of the book. Um, <laughs> what are you shooting for as far as a total page count with it, with everything? Obviously, um, uh, really hard to say. Yeah, uh, really hard to say because. Um, uh, the layout is there are so much images uh, on the pages and uh, uh, i wa i want it to be like half want to, i want half of the book to be images mm -hmm. um and uh, 
I, th- I I'm aiming at I think I'm aiming at, I was aiming for 220 pages like not too thick of a book uh, but still some pages uh, but I I think we've gone past that and uh, well 230 250 is something I don't know uh, we'll see <laughs> as writing uh, comes along and and uh, all the layouts uh, are being done. Mm-hmm. And incidentally, I do want, I would like to congratulate you for get, for going over 10 times your initial, your initial, um, yeah, your initial that goal. was um, really crazy. I, don't, uh, I, I thought it was like a, a, such a dark and niche game. So I thought, ah, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm going to make this, but, but well, there, there's an audience for this too. So mm-hmm. I'm happy about it. Yeah. And. What are you shooting for as far as a release window? Not a date per se, but a ge- but a general window. Uh, I, I'd say uh, November this year uh, up until March uh, next year. Uh, my my plan is to get it out by the holidays, uh, but. Uh, since this is my first Kickstarter and stuff can go wrong and the world is a really weird place right now. Uh, so we have like, uh, okay, we give us until March in case shit hits the fan. Mm-hmm. Oh, I, I will most certainly be keeping a close eye on how it de- on how it develops. Yep. You're, you're welcome. <laughs> and uh, and I'm not going to wish you the best of luck because that because that is harmful. <laughs> yeah. So in so in lieu of not yeah. jinxing. Yeah. But with all that said, I would like to sincerely thank you for taking the time out of your schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness at play here. Yeah, sure. Thanks. It was great. And Anytime you see fit to return to the temple, the door is always open. Yep. As I often say around here, drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have like this festus in front of me. I don't know if you know what a festus is, but it's like this uh, tetra box of use for kids. Mm-hmm. That's my <laughs> that's my alcohol for today. <laughs> Oh. Hey, whatever whatever works. <laughs> yeah. Oh. And of course, a sincere thanks goes out to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness. And there will be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here, on the open bar of the internet. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, Stay fucking frosty, everybody!